I know a lot of you have been waiting for a new Spider-Man Noir uh, video to come up. That's coming up very soon. However, with this project, I did have a time frame to work on it and I needed to focus most of my attention to making this leg. Hopefully another Spider-Man Noir video comes out soon. Enough disclaimers. This video is about how I made a fake prosthetic leg that's both wearable and removable and can actually function as a prop that actors can use during the play. So I had a little part in a play that my school had where one character had a prosthetic leg and halfway through the play, the prosthetic leg is taken off and is being used as a prop by the other actors and actresses. But the theater department did not have a prosthetic leg just lying around that they could use. So them knowing about this channel and that I'm into cosplay asked me to make a prosthetic leg that they could use for the play. I agreed and eventually made it a lot more complicated than it needed to be. Um, however, it's functional, it works a lot more durable than I was expecting. And also I had a very small amount of time that I could work on this. So it is not 100% complete as to where I want it to be. You can see I made plans for the leg. It turned out very close to what I wanted it to be. But because of time, I did not necessarily finish it. For example, in the plans, there's a piece of leather that wraps around the top of the prosthetic leg. And also the armature sort of, I'm not sure what it's called, the armature part that goes up to the thigh which holds the leg better. I didn't have enough time, nor did they have the necessary materials that I needed to use. But even without those, I'm pretty happy with the way that the leg turned out. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna send you off to the video. I hope you enjoy the video. Maybe in some of your guys' own projects, you're not making a prosthetic leg, but maybe this can also help in like design choices that you're making for your own costume. The video is a lot longer than I want it to be, but I had to make sure that I explained almost everything that I was doing to this costume and it wasn't even that much. If you want, you can follow me on Instagram. That's pretty much the only other social media platform that I'm on that I use frequently. You can follow me there. You could also subscribe to my YouTube channel because I try to make awesome projects and other cosplays that all of them I make sure to do my best and I'm constantly learning new skills along the way. But all that being said, hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna send you off now officially and I'll talk to you guys later. This is gonna be the shell for the leg. I've 3D printed a giant cone with the top cut off of it and the inside hollowed out. So I want this fake prosthetic leg to be removable just in case any future productions calls for it and they do like rip it off of whoever's wearing it. I want this part to be a door. So this part is where it opens up and then this part is where like the hinges will go. So with this design, I'm gonna cut off this line here I'm cut off this line here and this line right here. And also I will be adding magnets on the inside as well. This piece over here will go inside the shoe of whoever's wearing it. So your foot will be here, top of the shoe here. And then I'm gonna drill holes into this piece so that the shoelaces could go through there. Once this piece is attached to the rest of the leg and then the shoelace from whatever shoe that you have on would lace through there and it will hold on to your shoe as, as tight as possible, as much as it can. So that way, if you do take this off and you flail it around, the shoe's not just gonna fall off and then you're gonna see um, this sticking out. That's the main plan here. You're gonna see it play out, uh, you know, once the video goes on. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut along where I have these solid white lines that I drew. So I'm gonna cut these off using the cutting wheel of my uh, rotary tool here. Make sure if you do do this, make sure you wear uh, safety glasses as well as a mask just so that you're not breathing in the fumes from the burnt plastic that's gonna happen or any uh, little dust that will pop up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these parts out right now and then we're gonna continue on from there. So all of our pieces are cut. What we have over here are my hinges, some uh, 3D printed parts and uh, some screws. So I went to the workshop in my school and I grabbed as many small hinges that I could. These were all the ones that I found and we're gonna be using these on our leg. Here is the front part of the leg and here we have the two parts on the back. The way I want it to open is like a saloon door. In order to do that, I'm gonna have to add these hinges wherever I deem necessary. So I'm gonna add one of these larger hinges on top here, then the smaller hinge on bottom here, and maybe another large one about above the halfway point here. And then you can see these 3D printed pieces. I printed these a while ago. What these are for are for these 
magnets here. These are rare earth magnets and I 3D printed this so that this part could fit right into there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna glue that magnet into there, uh, but these parts are gonna be connected on the middle part on the inside so that when this is closed, it the magnets hold it together as much as they can. That's the plan for that. I also have some springs that I'm gonna talk about later once I've assembled most of this. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the inside here because you can see there's a lot of strings that I need to sand off just to make the inside of this as comfortable as possible for whoever's wearing it. So I printed this much out in a spool that I had that was almost done. It did not make it all the way, you can see here. There's a clear line to where um, this PETG that I got from Overture and then this PEG, PETG that's from uh, or Sun, but I'm not 100% sure how strong this piece is right here. And I know this leg's gonna be thrown around a lot, so what I have here is this. So you fill this up with butane and the butane heats up this bit here. I have this bit on right now, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn it on. It's heating up the bit. Now once the bit heats up, basically just run it through here just to make sure that there's a better weld between these two layers. Now this side's gonna be covered, so I'm not worried about it looking pretty here. The outside and the inside are gonna be covered in foam. The inside and, and foams for the comfort of whoever's wearing it. It'll add extra shock absorbent so that if it's thrown or if whoever's wearing it trips. So I figured out how I'm gonna do this part. So you can see here is the hinge. I cut an indent in here for this thicker part of the hinge to fit into. So that way it's not sticking out all the way in the back. I also drilled into the hinge with a larger drill bit so that that way all the screws that I have, you can see I have a bunch of little miscellaneous ones. Those would sink in better. So that way we would cover this whole thing with foam and a bit of leather. Uh, it covers that and it will ba barely be noticeable. In order to make the hinge more flush to the top of this, I had to sand down a little bit right here so that this part could sink in. And that way, once this is on, it fits there. It's almost flush with the top, but I'm not really concerned about making it as pretty as possible since it is gonna be covered. That's gonna be the most time consuming part, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Just trying to make all of them flush. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little time lapse of that right now. So you can see here, I just sprayed a little bit of blue spray paint on where the screws are so that way I could take them out and then I'll be able to cut where they meet here. Cause it's a lot more difficult even with this tool here to reach them. It's always gonna be at a weird angle. So I'm just, so I just did blue spray paint and that marks the entirety of what I don't need. So now the hinges fit, but I need to make sure that they fit while this is lined up. There we go, those do, now I gotta do this one over here. Imagine breathing in all of that. That's why you gotta wear a mask. So I have to, so I have to drill these smaller pilot holes so that if once I go move on to the little slightly bigger hole, um, it's not gonna crack, crack the plastic here. 
Now we're gonna do this on every single hole, just to strengthen it, the plastic surrounding it. I'm also gonna do it on the back side as well. So now I need to screw the remaining hinges onto this piece here. I'm gonna use these tiny screws here. Uh, why these? I don't know. These are just the ones I had and they're pretty small, but they're, the head is actually too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill them into a piece of wood. You can see I've already had some here. Drill them into this piece of wood, put them against my belt sander, and then sand down the head of it until it's flat like this one here. After that's done and they're cooled a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my vise and I'm gonna cut off about this much because I know that it's about that much that sticks through the rest of the plastic and, and, and I don't need that to be sticking into anyone's leg. So now that all these tiny little screws are cut and sanded down, I'm gonna go ahead and attach everything together now. This is gonna be the main use thing here, this E6000 glue. There'll be a link in the description, of course. So I gotta pick up all of these hinges. You can see also I sanded the hinges here on the inside where everything's gonna be glued. But now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this here. And put a generous amount onto these pieces. Now I'm using a screwdriver because a drill will be way too powerful and it'll definitely crack the plastic. I have that bit here. I'm going to quickly do this end over here to hold it to make sure it gets held together. Now I'm really expecting the glue to be doing most of the work here, holding it together. There we go. Those are in. Now I gotta wait for the glue to dry. And while I wait for the glue to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp down everything. Not too tight because again, I don't wanna crack the shell here. And then these just need, I just need to make sure that they're screwed. There we go. I'm try, I gotta be careful here so I don't uh, strip the threading uh, on the plastic. But this one, this one did uh, get loose a little bit. This one uh, seemed to be holding on. So I'm trusting in this one and the glue. So I'm gonna leave this until tomorrow morning and I'll come back to it. I'm sorry if you can hear the noise in the background, they're kind of working on stuff, but here is the leg. The hinges are glued and screwed on. So they're really tough right now. I'm not gonna try to hit it too hard because obviously it's, I don't, know, I don't know how strong this is, even though I'm pretty confident in it. But now what we're gonna do is attach the magnets on the inside. And how I'm gonna do that is with these 3D printed parts that I made. So I just printed them pretty flat like this and then heated it up and then pushed it where I want them to be so that it's curved to where I want it to be. And also this is where the magnet is gonna fit in. Here are my rare earth magnets that I got on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. But basically one of these will fit right into here perfectly and it'll be glued onto there and it'll sit on the inside here and we would have another one on the inside of the other side. So that way when it's closed, it's held together uh, with the magnets. And these are pretty strong and I'm gonna put three. So one on top, middle and bottom, just to make sure that it's really strong and it's not gonna fall off if, if whoever's wearing it like does a kick. So yeah, I, I'm pretty confident that these will be okay. I'm just gonna grab my white paint marker and I'm gonna close this and then mark on the inside where I want these magnets to be. So I'm gonna want this one here, making a line across both of the pieces so that I know that they're gonna line up perfectly. So now, like I did with this piece here, I'm gonna grab one that I didn't heat up yet. Heat it up and then press it against wherever I'm gonna have it. Just enough to make it pliable. Squeeze it so that it fits perfectly. Maybe wear gloves so that it's not burning your thumbs. Now, before I glue these onto here, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the bottom of this and also where I'm gonna glue it just so that the glue uh, is able to hold on to it a lot better.
pretty evenly. You can see it's kind of at an angle. So that's why I'm not putting it uh, directly on the edge because it'll give it a little space for that angle, allowing the magnets to touch each other. I'm gonna try to clamp this down. So luckily I had three hammers and I'm just holding them down on where the plastic is so that the glue could harden and it'll be pushed down as much as possible. So I'm gonna wait for this glue to dry and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I've glued in the magnets to each one. I just scratched the back of the magnet so that it, the glue has more grip to it. Now, if I close it, it automatically shuts and there's some resistance when I try to pull it apart. But in my opinion, not enough resistance. So we have these springs here. I came in a pack of two. Basically what I'm gonna try to do is make one, two, three, four points where the spring is gonna be wrapped around the edge here so that it would pull it closed as much as possible. So I'm gonna be making four of these tiny spring parts out of this whole thing. This was actually attached right here, but I cut this end off. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I have these needle nose pliers. I've already done some of it here, just so you could see. Now this is the 3D printed piece that I made. This fits perfectly into here. And also the screw that I'm using fits in there as well. I heat this up the same way that I did with the magnets and then used it to cover up as much of the spring as I could so that when it's on, it's less likely to irritate uh, whoever's wearing it. And you can see that it pulls the leg closed. So I'm gonna add the pieces to the bottom here and then do the same thing on the other side over here as well. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far. We have all the hinges paired up. I wish I could have done the same screws as I did on this side, but it's totally fine. It does the same exact function. It opens up just as I wanted it to. The springs will, will pull it closed while the magnets will help uh, keep it closed the entire time. Now what I'm gonna do is wrap this thing in foam. The foam is gonna help protect it by being a shock absorber. I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a little template right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it, wrap the leg in this plastic not a whole bunch but a good amount of duct tape we're gonna do this all the way around and then i'm gonna just cut it out if i was doing a duct tape head of mine like a duct tape head replica of mine then i would want to make the duct tape layer a lot thicker so that way it holds the shape of the head or even your arm as much as possible This is the foam that they supplied me with. Uh, however, this is not really good foam. It's more like styrofoam. I have no idea what it is, but you can see it's very porous. And when I heat it up with the heat gun, you, you can see it pretty much just expand. And it's also very weak. And this is not gonna be a good thing to use. Maybe on the inside of the leg, but definitely not on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the spare foam that I had from when I was making the backpack for the Among Us costume. Oh, dang it. I should have cut a little more on top. That's fine. For some reason, it's not meeting my line. So how I'm gonna conquer that is I'm gonna cut a straight line here and then cut out another piece of foam that's a straight line and then cover that seam with some uh, silicone caulking. Oh, almost cut myself. So we have that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sand with a very rough grit sandpaper all the way around this so that the adhesive has a good grip on this thing here. So that's sanded. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place this in here right where it's gonna be lined up. So we lined up there and I'm going to go ahead and press where these hinges are because they do stick out a little bit and I wanted to mark onto here. You can see this is where a hinge would be here and here. I'm going to go ahead and sand that down just a little bit just so that it just so that it doesn't bulge out the other side too much. So 
So now how, okay, so now how I'm gonna glue these two parts together is with this contact cement. It was on clearance and then my mom got it for me. So thank you, mom. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the inside of this. When, that's when you want to strike. But before I do that, I just realized I should probably mark, uh, I should mark how this lines up. So now it's time for me to spray the inside here and then spray the outside of the entire leg. And I'm, I'm gonna do that outside so that these don't, I don't just have this flying around in my workshop, so. I'm just holding it so that it bonds together. I could use rubber bands, but that'll kind of mess up the foam. So I'm just kind of tightly wrapping it with this masking tape. Okay, so this is the first time I'm using this stuff. So I hope it works and I hope that it uh, holds true. I'm gonna come back in a few hours to do that remaining slice right there. The contact cement has dried the really squishy foam. I put some of that on the inside, but now if you remember, from the, from literally like four seconds ago. Uh, I added this piece here. Now I need to cover up this seam. I also had to, yeah, I also had to cut uh, a bit here because it cut, because the foam is too thick. It was restricting uh, me opening up this piece, but um, I think it's gonna be pretty fine the way it is right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this seam here with some caulking. This is the caulking I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna put a little bit here. Hopefully I could just push it out. So there's that. And then I just pretty much stuff that into this seam. I'm gonna let this caulking dry a little bit and then I'm gonna add a little more because there's still like a bit of uh, separation there. So I'm just gonna let this dry. I'm actually gonna go ahead and smooth it out with some water. I just have a little bit of water on that cap here and I'm just gonna use it on the finger to smooth it out. So the silicone caulking has dried up now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna heat up the foam so that all the little pores on the foam will seal. You're gonna actually see the pores healing as I'm heating it up with the heat gun. You can see this side is a little shinier than this side. Just watch. You can use Plasti Dip and you can use Mod Posh to uh, cover this to pretty much give it a primer so that uh, paint would more likely will be more likely to hold on to this. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this Mod Posh. I'm gonna lay it over pretty much everything here and then um, let that dry and then come back to it tomorrow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go with this uh, transparent one, this transparent airbrush paint that I have. It is sand, you can see it right there. I'm gonna go over the whole leg with that. It's gonna take me a while. I'm gonna make sure, even though this is water-based, I'm gonna wear a good mask. Kind of went a little bit ahead of myself. So I did that coating and then I added these little uh, lines for the grain of the wooden leg. Uh, I just did that with an airbrush and then because it's water-based, some of it kind of caught off here and off here as well, but that's fine because we're gonna go ahead and weather this now. Now, the character that's wearing this leg is a very dirty man. We're gonna go ahead and weather this up. I'm gonna make sure to add a little bit more weathering down here where most of the mud I think will probably go and then um, a little bit up here. It's gonna be covered in leather up here, but I wanted to give the, the effect that like some like rainwater or something kind of stays there a little longer than everywhere else. Once something is covering here, it's gonna be a little dirty up here. Little bits over here so that it looks like that this right here is very intentional just because that's likely where uh, more dirt and grime is gonna be kept. How I'm gonna do that is with this um, potion here. It's just black shoe polish, brown shoe polish. This is the po shoe polish that I use. Added a little bit of water, 
now I'm gonna go ahead and just pretty much cover this whole thing in this and then we'll take a little bit off with a napkin. So mostly here because it did kind of get messed up. Also, um, I forgot to mention, I coated this with some uh, clear spray paint just so that when I go over this like this, the water-based paint underneath is not gonna just come off. I'm gonna let that dry just a bit. I'm gonna continue going this way. Now this coating alone is already gonna do a ton in making this look dirty. I'm gonna pat it away now. So there you go, that's already a ton better than how it was before. And I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna add a bit over here on the bottom and on top like I did over here. You know, give it a good dabs all the way around the bottom. But the bottom down here is dirty as well. So now we got that, now we're gonna go ahead and just, how do I say this? You don't wanna blend it in, uh, but uh, you kinda do. I don't know how to say this. Just make sure it's blended in but not uniformly I guess. Is the best way I could put it that's gonna dry a bit the more dry it is the the better it'll stay on uh, before you wipe it down so I'm just gonna leave that for a bit and a lot of the rain and muck is gonna kind of just stay wipe it onto a towel here so that most of it comes off and then just go at it again kind of make some dirty spots randomly so now the weathering is pretty much complete on the leg Really dirty, really nasty. I love it. I'm gonna replace, I'm gonna replace this with some with some black paracord. That way, it's it's blending in with the shoe. And you can see I made it a lot shorter and I rounded it off as as well. Set it down a bit uh, that were uncomfortable for the actor wearing it. I'm gonna make sure that the actor wearing this is gonna be wearing it very loose. So that way, when they slip it off. Um, it'll be easy to slip off. Um, I'm kind of in a hurry to finish this, but yeah, um, you should be seeing the end results pretty soon. This is a foam head that we had. This is gonna be stuck in the shoe. This part's gonna be stuck in the leg. Here's the leg. So this part is the main part that's be holding the leg, but um, just to give it a little more structure, this the neck here and like a little bit of whatever this is, is gonna be inside of the shoe when we replace it and this part of the head is gonna go into the shoe just so that part gets held a bit better but now what we got to do is cut this down until it fits into the shoe but without it um, slipping out so the school has this tool it's been used no one's cleaned it but it heats up and this is for cutting stuff like foam even plastic sometimes i'm going to use this to cut a little bit of the foam and i'm going to keep like checking to make sure that it fits inside of the leg and then i'll eventually move on to making it fit into the shoe so the head fits in here and i'm going to cut a straight line down here and then and then a little bit from here about to right here this is the part that the foot's going to be in and then this is just in the way So here it is right now. I'm going to, so this is the back of the foot. I'm going to cut off a good chunk right here as well, but I'm, but I'm just trying to get the profile of the shoe right now. This part's going to be screwed on the inside here and it's going to stay there at all times. So we need to make a little space for this to be in there. I'm just going to set it on top, kind of eyeball it. I'm going to say that line that I just drew with my nail. So that I'm gonna cut off that right now. While this heats up, the reason that I'm choosing this over just cutting it with a knife is that if I cut it with a knife, it's gonna pretty much tear it apart. Whereas this, it kind of crystallizes the end and it makes that it makes that end a lot stronger than it was before. And also it's, it's pretty cool. So now what I did was just eyeballed it, held it up to my shoe, marked where I think it'll fit and then I made those two lines and I'm going to cut against those lines. I'm going to go ahead and round this edge. Not really going to help, but it'll help fit in the shoe better. Sorry if I get out of frame. It's just I have a really janky setup right now. Here's my setup, by the way. Now I'm going to do something that I did for my Among Us costume that you probably haven't seen yet. I'm gonna add two of these tiny little screws. I added them in there, you can see. One's going down, one's going up. Just to give it a better support. 
so that this doesn't just break in half. And I'm gonna wrap this piece of foam all the way around and that's gonna help uh, stuff it into the shoe and the leg. Or maybe I should just do this in panels. I should do this in panels. So this panel will be on the top here. And then some panels on the sides. I should use some hot glue to fill in that hole there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the hot glue to this area. Some rubber bands would be nice, I guess. So now we have this, I'm gonna hold it like this until the hot glue dries and cools down. And then we'll be able to cut some, some pieces just to make it fit in the shoe better. See if it, how easy it get in there. Not easy enough. So what I'm gonna do is do this to all around the bottom, just so that it's easier to slip it into the shoe. I might do it like a bit harsher angle here. In between seams, this will get stuffed into the shoe. So it fits in the shoe. It's hard to get an angle, but it fits in the shoe. That's how it's gonna be. It's not gonna move around too much, but, um, but it's not closing in the back. So I'm gonna have to shave off a bit on the end. I think instead of doing the back here, I'm gonna shave off a little bit on the front one here. Just until about right there. Is this the piece for the inside of it? Or? Yeah. So when we take it off, I'll be there just to stuff this in there and then I'll set the leg so that you just have to worry about getting your leg in your pants. Okay. Yeah, I would say just wear it really loose so that so that when you take it off, you can just slip it you off. Just throw it off. Yeah. yeah. Here we have the shoe. The shin would already be attached. So when, when we take this off, this will open. And I'll just stuff this into there in one good swoop. And then, hopefully, this just closes. I think that's pretty good. It's closed. All the magnets are holding it as it can. I'm gonna hit the back. You see the springs and the magnets are doing really well to hold it closed. It stands up. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this string with a black paracord. So I've replaced that paracord. Also switched the side that it's on because you do see a little bit of it and it just makes more sense to me that it's going sideways. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and attach this piece to um, the rest of the shin. I'm gonna do that by drilling holes into here first and then after that's done I have a marking of where the bottom of the shin should go. And then I'll drill the holes and then I'll screw this piece onto it. So I have my, I have my thumb and my middle finger where the shin will end. So it'll be right here. Now instead of just marking it, I'm just gonna go ahead and drill the hole. I'm gonna start them in here first so that I'm not struggling on holding it. Okay, I, I've either caught it or it's not going through. I think I cut them. I might put some tape over it just so it doesn't like scratch up against someone's shin. Okay. I'm tightening, I tighten them, but just, just enough to not to make sure that they don't crack it. But now it's done, I think. So that's attached to there. Whoever would have it on, have it on loose, and then they'll have it on and just be walking around like that with it on. And then when it's time to put it on, because the shoe's loose, they're just gonna slip the shoe off. I stuff this into there, close it. And now it's ready to be a prop. So I'm gonna go handheld now so you can see it a bit better. This is it with the inside, inside. So we have it, I'm holding it. Ugh. Here it is with the, the inside part out. And then whoever's wearing it could just be wearing it. So I just finished editing this video and I wanna say thank you guys for 200 subscribers. 202 now. Um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys and thank you all for being here. 
and uh, yeah, thank you guys. So there is the removable, wearable, slash holdable uh, prosthetic leg that I made for a play at my school. I hope you guys enjoyed. I couldn't get good footage of me holding the leg. I'm showing it off to you guys because I had finished it about 30 minutes before the play actually started. Right after it was done, everybody had to get ready and get into costume. I'm doing my best to finish the Spider-Man Noir mask video at the moment. I'm trying my best to perfect um, the skills for basically the rest of the mask. I'm sorry for another really long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed anyway. Again, you can follow me on Instagram. I also have a thingiverse that I probably should mention after every video. I realize now that I'm making this video a lot longer than it should be, so I'm gonna end it now. I hope you enjoyed. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions about anything in this video or a question about anything in general. And I hope you guys enjoy the video and thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever I do.